If you just open a small business and just starting out, you should create a customized email address other than gmail.com. Especially if you start acquiring clients, then it looks more professional that you have an email address based on your company domain. In addition to that, you'll get more Google Drive storage plus more apps that you can use for your business. In this video, I'll show you how to set up Google Workspace for your business. We'll activate the 14-day trial and set up things on your Workspace admin account. For this video, we're going to use the business standard, but if you choose business starter, the configuration is exactly the same. If you're new here, subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more Google and Apple tutorials. Let's begin by clicking get started. For number of employees, you can just set one up for yourself or choose however many you want. Then select the country on the list and then click next. And then we'll ask you for your contact info, put your first name, last name, and your email address. Now click next. Then we'll ask you if you own your own domain. In my case, we do have a domain, but if you don't have one and you need one, click I need one. So I'm gonna click yes, I have one that I can use and then enter the domain name. Click next. Then it will confirm if this is correct. If it is, click next. And then we'll ask you if you want to share your ideas with Google. I'm okay with that, so click OK. I also like to live dangerously. So now we're ready to set up our user. Enter the email address that you want. And then assign a password to it. Click I'm not a robot. And then agree and continue. If you made a mistake on this, we can easily edit this later on under the user's admin portal. It will then confirm that you selected the 14-day trial with business standard subscription. This shows you the price and the currency after your trial ends. If you want 10% off on your first year, I have a promo code for business starter or business standard subscription. Check the description for more info on that. Once you're ready and you've entered your promo code, click next. Then enter your business name, your address, and your primary contact, as well as your credit card to proceed with the trial. Keep in mind that you won't get charged anything until your trial ends. Then when you're done, click next. Now that we've signed up, let's continue the setup. Click next. Now we need to verify that we own the domain. Click verify. In order to verify this, we need to add a one line text to our domain provider. So click continue. This is a text that we need to add to our domain. Copy this text, then go to your domain registrar or provider. I have mine on Google Domains. You might have yours on GoDaddy, Namecheap, one and one and others. Adding this text is the easiest method to do as long as you own the domain. If you don't have your domain under Google Domains and you need help, leave it in the comment below and I'll point you to the right direction. So copy this text and let's go to Google Domains. I'm gonna go to My Domains. Then on the left side, you'll see DNS, click that. Then scroll all the way in the bottom and look for custom resource records. So over here, you leave it at at, and then for here, look for txt, and leave that to one h, and then paste the text that we copied earlier, and then hit add. Whenever you're modifying a DNS record, it always gives you a warning that it might take 48 hours for it to take effect. But since our domain is with Google and our workspace is also with Google, this would take about 10-15 minutes. Once you wait about 15 minutes, let's go back to our Google workspace. And we still have our verify your domain screen here. Scroll down to the bottom. And you'll see the verify domain button. Now click the verify my domain. This may take a few minutes. I'm going to fast forward this part. And that is it. Our account is now verified. If for some reason you close your verification window before you actually verify, log back into Google Workspace and you'll see this yellow bar that you need to verify your domain. We're not going to add users now on this screen, but I'm going to show you how to add them using the admin console. But we're definitely going to activate our Gmail for this domain. So click activate. Then check these two boxes. And then click continue. Now we need to go back to our domain registrar, on my case it's Google Domains, and then modify the MX records. 
Now for Google Domains, it's much easier to modify the Amex records. I'll show you how it's done. So let's go to our Google Domains. Then go to your DNS settings and look for synthetic records. Then click Dynamic DNS and select Google Workspace. And then click the Add button. Since we're modifying the DNS records, this may take 10 minutes to 48 hours for it to take effect. Once you wait at least 10 minutes, go back to your Google Workspace, go to the bottom, and click Activate Gmail. This process may take about 5 minutes, so I'm going to fast forward this part. And we are done. We can skip for now. So we're now ready to set up our Gmail account. There are a few things here that we can do, such as setting up the app on our phone, migrate your email and documents, and enhance your mail security. So first, let's send a test email. Modify the test email if you want to, then click Send. Now let's go to our Gmail account, and we should see that test email. So that's working. Let's go back to our Google Workspace. Now if you've used your Gmail before, you'll see the Tile button over here and you'll see all the apps. And to use this for your mobile device, all you need to do is download the Gmail mobile app. If you want to migrate any emails or documents from another app, you can click this and it will give you the instructions on how to do that. I will not going to show you that, but I will show you how to enhance your mail security. On the top right, you'll see your account. So click that. Click Manage your Google account. Click Security on the left, and then scroll down and look for two-step verification. Click the Get Started button, enter your password, then enter your phone number or two-step verification, and then click Next. This will now text you a code on your phone. Enter that code, and then click Next. Then click the Turn On button. At the very least, you definitely want to add a voice or text verification. But a more secure way is using the Google Prompt, Authenticator app, or even the security key. To set up the Authenticator app, click Setup. Select the type of mobile device you have, and then click Next. Then download the Authenticator app on your mobile phone and scan the QR code. Once you've scanned the QR code from your mobile device, click Next. Then enter the verification code that you see on your mobile device. Then click Verify. And that is it, we are done. Since this is our admin account, I highly recommend that you set up two types of verification method as a backup in case one of the verification method is compromised. Now that we've taken care of securing our account, we are now ready to go to our admin console. Go back to your workspace or go to admin.google.com every time you want to modify your setup. We'll go through all the options here. First thing is the users. This will give you the list of all your users. We only have one, so click that. On the left, you'll see Reset Password. You can set it to automatically generate a password by toggling on and off. You can also set it so the user changes the password the next time they sign in. If you want to rename a user or modify an email address, click Rename User. You can modify the first name, the last name, and the primary email address. For Add to Groups, this is a good place to add users if you want to create departments for Google Drive Access or Email Group List. I'll show you how to create one later on. Now click User Information. Over here, this is a good place to add an alternate email address. If you only want to pay for one subscription for Google Workspace, this is where you want to create one. For here, we're going to create the info account. I'll use this for any email subscription that I don't want to give my main email address. You can create one for marketing or tech support or whatever you want. The key thing here is creating multiple email address without paying for a second Google Workspace subscription. Now to save that, scroll down and click Save. Just a quick reminder that if you are finding value in this tutorial so far, please click the like button. Now the next thing I want to show you is creating another user. Let's go to the users list. On the top, you'll see add new user and then type your second user's name and then the email address that you want. 
From here, you can also put the secondary email address, which is the alias that I showed you earlier on. For password, it's default to automatically generate a new one, or you can set one yourself. If you do that, it gives you the option to toggle off the password change on next sign-in. Once you're good with all the settings, click Add New User. It will then show you the user that you added. You can copy the password here and then email the user directly from this window. You can put the contact's email address here and send a copy to yourself. Once you've created that user, refresh your window and it should show you the user that you created. Now let's go back to the main menu. On the top left, you'll see the menu there and then click Home. I forgot to show you the dashboard menu. Click that. This is where you'll see all the errors or notifications regarding your Google Workspace. So click Review Address button to ensure that you have the correct email address for Google to contact you. Next, let's set up groups. To create a group, click Create a Group. For group details, put the name of the group, put a description, and then the group email address. We're going to create an all staff. For group owners, it's not required, but we're going to put the admin user. And then click Next. And then the access type, it's default to public. We can change that to Teams, which is almost the same as the public settings. We can make it announcements only. One thing that's critical to uncheck is the external settings. This way, no external users can contact the owners or view conversations. Then if you scroll down, you'll also see allow members outside your organizations to contact the whole group. To prevent spam from external users, I tend to disable this. Once we're set, click Create Group. If you want to add more members to the group, click Add Members, click the plus button here, and then type the username. And then click Add to Group. To see if the members has been added, click Refresh button. That's pretty much the basics of groups. Let's go back to the home dashboard. For organizational units, this is a good place to add multiple departments or multiple sector of your company. We only have one, so we have nothing to set up. Let's go back home. Next is building and resources. This is where you wanna add boardrooms or equipment that you wanna rent out. I tend to set up one meeting room at least, even though it's just me in the company. To set one, you need to add a building first and then create a building by clicking plus. Add a name. You can put your address here or your city. I'm going to put my office. You can add a description, add floors, and the address. After that, click add building button. Now that we've added a building, we can now add a room. So click back and then click the plus button here. Select meeting room. Type is optional. And we only have one building, so that's that. Resource name is the email address of that room. Capacity, you can put whatever capacity is there. I find it weird that it's mandatory. And then once you're done, click add resource. And that's it you've added your first room. For devices, this is a good place to manage your users' devices, especially mobile phones. We only have one user, so we're not gonna set that up. Now let me show you a few things about apps. Click that. The main thing here is G Suite. All the apps that each user can use are listed over here. If you want less distraction, you can turn it off. If you don't wanna use calendar, you can easily hover over that and then turn it off for everyone. If you do want to modify some settings on a specific app, click on that app and then you should be able to see all the options that you can change. Next is security. The main thing that I turn on here is the two-step verification. To enforce it, click on over here. Now I always try to enforce this so I don't need to worry about it whenever I create a new user. You can put a grace period for enrollment or leave it with none. And we're done with that, click Save. The next thing you wanna look at is reports. From time to time, you wanna go here just to see what's going on with your Google Workspace account. 
it shows you all the users that you have, how much storage you're using, if people have set up two-step verification, and all that kind of stuff. Next is billing. This is where you'll see your current subscription. If you want to change your subscription, click Add Subscription. From here, you can downgrade or upgrade your current subscription. If for some reason you don't want to continue with your subscription anymore, click your current subscription. And then over here, you'll see Cancel Subscription. Next is Account Settings. This is where you want to add your company logo. Under Personalization, you'll see Logo. Click that. Now you want to change this so it doesn't show Gmail when you go into your Gmail account. So you'll see on the top right, it says G Suite. We'll change that to reflect our logo. Select Custom Logo. Try to resize your logo to 320 by 132 so it looks nice when you look at it. Then select File to Upload. Select your file and then click Open. Click Save when you're done. Now let's go to our Gmail account. As you can see, it still has G Suite on the top right. If we refresh the page, it should give us our Stuffbox logo. Now let's go back to our Workspace Admin Console and show you admin roles. Over here, if you have a big organization, then it's good to set this up. But if it's just you, then it's good to just leave this alone for now. The next one is domains. Now, if you have another domain, this is where you want to add your additional domain. Click Manage Domains. And you don't want to manage multiple Google Workspace, then this is where you want to add your domain. And the user that you add in this particular domain will be a separate subscription for that specific domain. But if you don't want to pay for another subscription and you want to use another domain, then you want to do a domain alias. This way, any users you have on a primary domain will have a secondary email address. For data migration, use this if you're transferring from Outlook to Gmail or from personal Gmail to Google Workspace. We won't go through this on this tutorial. Now, the last thing is support. If you want to contact Gmail, there's Help Assistant over here. Since you're paying for a subscription, they are available 24 7. Now, a good site to bookmark is the Google Status Dashboard. This will show you if Gmail is having issues in one of their products. Once you've set up your Google Workspace and you want to create a static website or WordPress website using Google Cloud, then click this tutorial to learn how to do that. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you.